Okay. One thing before we go on to our topic today, which is actually introduction to the complex plane, I want to make sure that we just go back over one point about intersections of polar curves. We were talking about common points. I want to make clear that what makes a common point is, let's go to this problem right here, is a point that intersects, where the graphs intersect but cannot be found algebraically. So I just wanted to clarify. We found these points where we found the graph at pi over 6, 1 half, and pi, 5 pi over 6, 1 half. We found those points algebraically. We see that the graphs intersect at 0, 0, but we did not find the point 0, 0 algebraically. Therefore, the point zero, zero is a common point because it is not found algebraically. When we solved for theta, we didn't find it. Therefore, it's just a common point. It is not a solution. Not found algebraically, therefore not a solution. Okay, I just want to make that clear. Okay, so what point is missing when we solve algebraically? Zero, zero, therefore it's a common solution, a common point, not a solution. Okay, okay, so we're going to talk about the complex plane. So, new topic. Okay, all complex numbers. Complex numbers, we're introducing imaginary numbers. We've talked about this before, earlier this year and last year in Algebra 2. So back, here we are. All complex numbers are in the form x plus yi, or we've talked about them as a plus bi sometimes. They can be written as an ordered pair xy. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these examples right here and we're going to graph them. So we have 3 plus 2i. How do we graph them? <coughs> so let's graph a. We graph them just as we would a regular, um, regular coordinate point, where 3 goes along the what we call the real axis, and, y, and um, 2 goes along the imaginary axis. So see that? All right, so let's graph that. 3, 2i. Well, that is a. And b negative 5, negative i, and that is b. c would be positive 6, negative 4, that would be c. Okay, now I'm going to plot some points, and then I'll put, the, put these points on here. I put this point here, and I'm going to put a point up here, and I'm going to put a point over here next to B, right? One point away from B, I'm going to call it F. All right, so I've put some points out here, D, E, and F, and let's see if we can graph, go the other way. What are those points? What are the address of those points? So D, what, how, how do we get to D? Well, we'd go over five points in the real direction and five points in the imaginary direction, so that would be 5 plus 5i, right? And e, e is um, right down here, so it would be zero points in the real zero in the real direction, so we don't have to put anything. And then down for negative 4i. And now what about f? F is 6, negative 6 in the real direction. Minus one, minus i one in the imaginary direction. Okay, so very easy. We're very used to plotting points. <coughs> now we're going to go back to some oldies but goodies midpoint and distance formula. Okay, and we're going to find the midpoint and distance between complex numbers exactly as we did for real numbers. So, but we're just going to practice. Okay, so <coughs> these are our. Midpoint and distance formulas, they should be familiar. Let's do some practice. So if we have these two points, 
um, for our example, negative 6 plus 3i and 4 minus i, how would we find the midpoint? Okay, well let's just say x1 plus x2, negative 6 plus 4 over 2, and uh, 3 minus 1, and just work with the numbers, over 2. What does that equal? Well that would equal negative 2 over 2 and 2 over 2, which gives me, um, let me look at that, negative 1, 1. Now, what does that equal? How do I write that as an imaginary number? Well, if I'm writing that as an imaginary number, that is going to be my first coordinate, my x coordinate is real, negative 1, my y coordinate is imaginary. So I translate that back to imaginary, okay? So now we're going to do the distance formula. Distance formula for the same point. Okay, well the distance formula is the square root of x1 plus x2, which is negative 6 plus 4 squared, square that, plus um, y, and did I say plus, and I meant to write minus. S sorry, x it's I'm following the formula. The distance formula is x2 minus x1. So it's 4. I'm totally writing this backwards. Let me write that again. 4 x2, 4 minus a negative 6 squared. And then y my y2 neg negative 1 minus 3 squared. Alright, so let's write that here. 4 minus a negative 6 is 10 squared. Plus negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 squared equals the square root 10 squared is 100 plus negative 4 squared is 16 that equals the square root of 116 alright now how can I break that up is there any any um, perfect squares I can pull out of that yes if I divide 116 I can break divide it by 4 it's 4 times 29 so I can pull out the square root of 4 is 2 radical 29. Okay, so the distance between those two points is 2 radical 29. Okay, so let's do practice. Well, actually, I'm going to let you practice with this point. So this is x, this is y, so x1, y1, x2, y2. So go ahead and practice with that problem. Okay? And bring it into class so we can check it. Okay, let's move on. We've got some new vocabulary here. Okay, we've got modulus and argument of a complex number. So that sounds complex, but it's really not. The modulus is the magnitude, and we remember this from our vector days, the beginning of the semester. M the magnitude is the distance from the origin to the point. And we know how to figure that out, that's just the, the formula would be the distance is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And the argument is the direction. How do we find direction? Well, tangent. The tangent of theta is y over x. If we want to find theta, theta is the inverse tangent of those two. We are very familiar with that. So let's let's do one. Okay, so we're going to find the modulus and the argument of this problem. So let's do it. So we'll say, we'll call it z equals the square root of x squared, negative 3 squared, plus y squared, 2 squared, equals, I that, made that too big, the square root of 9 plus 4 equals the square root of 13. Okay, so that is the distance. Okay, so that's the modulus. There we go. Now let's find the argument. So that's the modulus. Okay, and this is the argument. Okay, so there we go. There's the argument. The argument says the tangent of theta equals y over x, so that would be 2 over negative 3. Okay, well, 
y is 2 and x is 3. So what quadrant would that be in? Well, that would be in the second quadrant. So remember to keep that in mind. So um, that's going to be uh, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of negative 2 thirds. Well, I'm going to just do that on my calculator. Let me grab my calculator. Remember that I'm, when I do a problem like this, I need to be in degree mode. So let me check the mode. I am in degree mode. So I'm going to say what second inverse tangent, negative 2 divided by 3. And I'm going to get negative 33.7 negative 33.7. But I need to think for a moment because is this in the first quadrant? No it's not. So let's draw for ourselves an angle uh, should be right to the end. Theta if I am if, if the angle that theta makes with the horizontal is negative 33.7 what is the actual angle the other the actual angle to 0? Well, let's take 180 minus 33.7, and I get 146.3, okay? That's the positive angle, okay? So theta, theta equals 146.3 degrees, okay? Now, if I want to find out what this angle in radians, sometimes I want to know what the radians are, how would I do that? Okay, I would take 146 degrees, multiply it by pi over 180, right? What I want, what I, what I, always, what I want by what I have. I'm moving from degrees to radians. So I take what I have times pi divided by 180. Okay? And I get 2 point, excuse me, move that there. 2.5 radians. 2.55 radians. Okay? So that so I'm going to write it both ways. 2.55 radians. Okay? Okay. <coughs> All right. So now I'm going to leave you one to do and you can check it back in class with me, you're going to find the modulus and the argument of this num this imaginary number. Okay? <clears throat> we'll check that back. And I want you to get the answer in degrees and in radians. Okay. Stop the tape and work that through. Okay. I'm going to keep moving. How do we convert between polar and rectangular form? Okay. So, we're going to convert the following, ex uh, we're going to say the following expression is in the polar form. Polar form. We know that. We've been working with this for the last several days. Polar form of the complex number, where r represents the modulus, right, the, the length, right, r, the distance out from the origin to the point, and theta represents the argument or the rotation of z. Okay, so we want to take this complex number and express it in polar form. Okay, how are we going to do that? Now I want to make a note. Make sure your calculator calc in degree load. Okay, just make a note of that. Alright, so we have z is um, radical 3 minus i x minus y i a minus b i. Okay, that's where we are. Now, we want to find r and theta, polar form, right? r, theta. How do we do that? Well, let's find the modulus. r equals the square root of what? Radical 3 squared plus negative 1 squared is going to equal Radical 3 squared is just 3. Negative 1 squared is just 1. That's going to be the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, so the length, the modulus, is 2. 
All right, now we're going to find theta. So theta is going to be the inverse tangent. I could do this in two steps, but I know I'm going to have to do the inverse. The inverse tangent of y, which is negative 1, over radical 3. Now, do I remember what the, the inverse tangent of 1 over radical 3 theta? If I don't remember that, I could convert that to uh, the inverse tangent, multiply radical 3 on top and the bottom, and get negative um, radical 3 over 3. That might help me a little more, but I know that's 30 degrees. Okay, and if I, I could draw a triangle to help me remember, or I could do it on my calculator. So if you don't remember, you can do it on your calculator. <coughs> now, also always remember what quadrant is this in. X is positive, Y is negative. So positive, negative. What quadrant is that in? That is in quadrant 4. Okay. You always have to be aware of what quadrant you're in. So whatever angle I get, I have to put it in the right quadrant. So let's do the inverse tangent of um, 1 divided by radical 3. So I'm just pretend, I mean, pretending that we don't remember what that is. Okay, that's 30 degrees, but 30 degrees in the fourth quadrant. So if I'm in the fourth quadrant, what angle, what is the theta there? Okay, the fourth quadrant, that's going to be 11 pi over 6, okay? So that's my theta. Okay, so now I go to this formula over here. This is the formula that I have to go to, okay? This is the polar form of a complex number. So I have my r, I have my theta. z equals r, which is 2. I figured that out, okay? times the cosine of 11 pi over 6 plus i sine theta, which I already figured out, 11 pi over 6. There we go. There I have figured out the polar form of my complex number. Okay? So let's do that one more time together. Okay? r equals the square root of negative 2 squared plus 1 squared equals the square root of 4 plus 1 equals the square root of 5. We can just leave it in that form. We don't have to get any more complicated. Theta equals the inverse tangent of y1 over negative 2 x. What is the inverse tangent of negative 1 half? Well, <coughs> I <laughs> don't know that off the top of my head, so I'm going to take the calculator and do that. Second inverse tangent of negative 1 divided by 2, and I get negative 26.6. So um, theta, let me think about this for a minute, theta equals negative 26.6. And what quadrant am I in? Well, let me just think about that for a minute. I am going negative and positive. So I am in the second quadrant. And I have gone negative 26.6. So what is my actual angle? So my actual angle is 180 minus 26.6. Theta is 153.4 degrees. Theta is 153.4 degrees. That is what it is in degrees. What is it in radians? To find the radians, I multiply by pi over 180. Multiply by pi divided by 180. Yeah, yeah. Maybe let me put that in parentheses. I should have done that. 153.4 multiply by pi over 180. And I'm going to get 2.7 or 2.67 radians. 
2.67 radians. Okay, which is exactly what we thought it would be. It's in the second quadrant, right? Because pi is right over here, a perfect 180, and we want 153 degrees, which is about 2.67 radians. Okay. <coughs> so <laughs> how am I going to write that? I'm going to say z equals radical 5r times the cos times the cosine of, and I can write either 2.67 or 153.4. I'm going to say 2.67 plus i sine 2.67. And I can do either. Okay? There we go. All right. Almost done. All right. Express the complex number in rectangular form. So now we're going the other way. So, and we've done this um, <coughs> with the last unit. So, <coughs> let's see what we have. Okay. We know that our formula is x equals r cosine theta. Okay. So, let's, we know that we, we can easily tell by looking that we have r of 4 and theta is 2 pi over 3. So x equals 4 cosine 2 pi over 3. And when I put that in my calculator, I just make sure that my calculator is in radians now because I'm going to use radians. So I make sure that I'm back to radians and I say 4 cosine 2 pi divided by 3. And I put that in my calculator, and I get negative 2. So I get, from my x value, I get negative 2. You know how to do this. My y is r sine theta, which is 4 sine 2 pi over 3. I put that in my calculator in radian mode, and I'm going to get a value of 2 radical 3. So now I know that my coordinates are negative 2, 2 radical 3. How do I write that? Well, if I want to write that in complex number form, I have to say negative 2 plus 2 radical 3i. Okay? So, there we go. I want you to do number 4 on your own and bring it to class. Okay? Okay. Alright, that is all we want to do for today. Okay, see you in class.